Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Ladies and gentlemen, see the speaker doesn't work over here. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Oh yeah, this is the good side here. Come on, this is hey, let's hear it for the good side. All right. <laughs> Welcome to my dad's 70th birthday. And <laughs> It is not Bo's birthday, Dad. <laughs> And I, I still need the screen, so thanks for bringing it over. Uh, yeah. I almost took it out. <laughs> Come here. Happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, be, everyone, did you know everyone, there's another surprise. Everyone here is preparing a roast. <laughs> For you. So I thought that I would prepare a toast. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Keep running away from me. <laughs> All right. To a man who taught me about responsibility, generosity, and kindness. To the King of Hearts. <laughs> Happy birthday, and uh, there are a few people that I want to introduce or acknowledge and thank, especially for this special day, and um, one, of course, my mom, who comes to mind uh, first. 
<laughs> whatever that means. <laughs> uh, for uh, helping so much. And yesterday, too, for helping. So you thought they were going to the art museum? <laughs> no, You'll I never... <laughs> never question her. <laughs> You'll never trust her again. <laughs> you, you bring me a report from the teacher. <laughs> Yeah, you think she's been going to school all this time, too, don't you? I'll check. I'll check. <laughs> and for my wife, Amy, who worked so hard Yay. to help put this together. Where is Amy? She's still working. Over there. And to Bo and Dorothy, who helped this morning, and Phil, and Nancy, and, and uh, Hans, and, and uh, everybody that helped this morning. We appreciate it. And, and Marcia came in, and... Uh, Lillian and who else was helping you so much? Blanche and everybody who helped this morning. We had it all together honest, but we thought, <laughs> no, it, it's a big job. It's surprising. Um, but thank you all. You made it wonderful. Uh, and I want to acknowledge two people who came, who, actually six people who came all the way from uh, San Francisco. My Aunt Lillian and Uncle Danny drove down this morning and are driving back and to my brother and sister and their special significant others <laughs> Hans and Ingrid thank you so much for coming and and being um, part of our special day this is a great day and um, which reminds me uh, why don't you give me the mic forget it no longer your birthday party. <laughs> uh, Uncle Manuel and Auntie Adele, who, I'm, who I've known all my life, <laughs> who influence on, on all of our families, and their son, who probably, without whose help, we might not be celebrating this special day. <laughs> and he... <laughs> And the beautiful thing about this guy is he probably would go just like he did. Well, you know, I had some help of, of just a very special person in my life. Thank you. And of course, uh, there's, there's a lady back there that, that uh, is my special aunt. And I'm so glad you were able to come here. And Mike and Marcia, thank you so much for not only coming here but being part of it. And that's my Aunt Sarah. And Sam and Helen and all my dad's friends who we've known for so long. We really are so happy that you made it here and are, and are here. Well, what have I not said? <laughs> uh, I want to turn this over to my pop, <laughs> the birthday boy. I truly and truly was surprised. And now I don't know if I can believe my wife and my son anymore. But it is wonderful. And I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. And God bless all of you and thank you. Now, it's time, it's free for all for the mic, but I would like, I think in order of, of preference, we should give the lady who has been by his side, on his back, <laughs> and, and one more, one more, it's always a drill, and in his heart. Oh, sure. Thank you. Well, Charles told me I was going to say a few, th a few words. There are going to be very few, but I have to have a crib sheet. Otherwise, I'm too excited. I'm too excited I might forget, so you forgive me. Okay. I want to thank Charles and Amy for their suggestion to make this party and for all the work that they have put into it. And We'll take it. We'll take okay. the applause. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just thrilled that my family came down to help us celebrate. 
it's hard for me to say the word 70 because I can think back to when 70 was really ancient. <laughs> no, no, no. But honestly, when I thought about what I'm going to say, I was thinking that it's just like a snap and I can think back to this young good-looking redhead with real broad shoulders who had the best line that any guy could ever have. <laughs> he's still good-looking and he's still got a line. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's a loving, considerate gentleman, a real gentleman. Uh, he cooperated with me to let me have four <laughs> wonderful children for whom he would give his right arm. I hope he has many more years of feeling good, and I also say thanks to Irv. And he's not getting any older, he's getting better. In order of age, of sibling, no, no, we'll get, well, by all rights, you should have the next crack, Uncle, that's true. But, okay, you got it, well, that's all right. Hi, I'm Dan Hamburg, I came into this family Yay. by marrying the little sister Yay. who chased me until she caught me. But I, I do remember a story that I think I would like to relate. And that is that I don't know whether Maury will remember, but it's a time in my life that I should have taken his advice. <laughs> I was uh, just back from the service and uh, had just gotten married and was desperately in need of an automobile. And as you might know, he was uh, slightly involved in the automobile business. I didn't take his advice. I didn't take the advice of my father, who had lent me $200. And I bought a 1936 Chevrolet from a fella who lived near 12th Street in Detroit. And uh, I took it, to, as soon as I bought it, I then, and paid for it, I then approached Maury and asked Maury if he would check it out for me. Maury and I drove to a gas station on Dexter near Davison in Detroit a friend of his, I think it was a Texaco station, I don't remember, but I, if, I, if I ingratiate this story, uh, I may, b may be doing that, but I do think I remember when we walked into the station, who was owned by a friend of his, the fellow became hysterical, because we pulled it in and asked him to check it out, and uh, I don't even know if he checked it out, but the hysterics was that he had salted this car with sawdust, and the uh, transmission so that the oil wouldn't leak out. I think I had that car for maybe two or three months, put about $80 into it, which was a fortune, and then one day I was driving to work. I was working at the time in Wyandotte, Michigan, and I left the uh, where I was living. On f and I'm, the reason I mention this, I think some of you are from Michigan or Detroit, and I mention these streets. We, Lillian and I had an apartment on uh, Philadelphia and 14th. And as I left that one morning to go to work, and I drove down uh, 14th Avenue to Grand Boulevard, about four cars were in front of me, and I stopped at the light, and the transmission fell down. <laughs> I left the car there. I had it towed by Dexter Chevrolet, who in turn told me how much it was going to be. And ultimately, my brother-in-law got the car for scrapped, and I think I got 25 or $30 for it. So that's when I remember that I didn't take his advice. I should have taken it at that time. But I really sincerely, Lily and I, wish you a healthy, happy 70th birthday and many, many more. Okay?
Thank you, Uncle Danny. <laughs> uh, now, uh, Phil and Nancy, who are um, prepared to talk about no, <laughs> are you? Who are relatives to prepared to <laughs> siblings? Phil, Nance, or do you want some time to think about it? No, Get, no. no don't give him time to think about it. First, I'm taking a picture of all of you. <laughs> Hold it. All right. Thank you for coming. It's wonderful. I saw the expression on my dad's face. It was great. It was golden. And my mother's face. I think she's having her birthday, too, today. And thank you, Charles and Amy, for all the incredible work you've done to bring all these people together. And uh, I love you, Dad. Happy birthday. I wish you a lot of health and happiness. And, uh, no, not yet. Well, I prepared two short stories to tell about my dad. I thought about a lot of them, and most of them I really couldn't tell. But there's two, there's two that I'd like to tell about him. Uh, I don't know if it's really roasting him because I think you'll see that they're very complimentary to who he is. And one is a memory from way back. I was about so high and my father would take me to baseball games, which were a lot of fun. Uh, I didn't know anything about baseball. My father would buy me a hot dog and then a malt and then some popcorn and another hot dog and some candy corn and that's how I spent my time at baseball games so I thought that they were basically a place to go and eat and some guys were running around chasing after a ball but we were at the Coliseum in LA and somebody hit a foul ball and here comes a ball down the line and I really wanted it and we were about oh about eight feet off the ground and I told my dad come on I really want that how can I get the ball and the ball boy was running towards it and he got the idea, he held me by my feet, upside down, down, the ball came, I picked up the ball, and I got my first baseball. Thank you, Dad. Excuse me, my, my mother and I are having a conference here in the middle of this. Another story involves a car also. And I think I was about 17 years old, a little while ago, and I came home and there was a shiny red Triumph Spitfire sports car sitting in the driveway. And I expected new cars, you know, all the time in the driveway. This is a beautiful car. And as I was walking up to the front steps, I was salivating. And I walked into the, the front door, my dad was there, and jokingly I said, Hey, Dad, that's a great car. Whose is it? And he reached in his pocket, and he took out some keys, and he says, It's yours. Aww. So, <laughs> it lasted a while. So I want to thank you for your generosity, Dad, that I've received over all the years. And happy birthday. I decided not to tell any car stories. <laughs> I had a lot of cars. Thank you, Dad, for all the cars. <laughs> happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. I love you very much. I don't really have an antidote to, anecdote to tell, but I just want to say that I'm very happy to be here, and I'm happy that all your friends and relatives came and all of our relatives and um, you're just one of the sweetest men I've ever met you're just the best and thank you and I just have one thing to say <laughs> and that is do you remember um, that bottle of scotch that had 
half gone one time and we blamed the cleaning lady. <laughs> Okay, well, Uncle Manny, uh, oh, don't look surprised. <laughs> I do want you to say something. And uh, Aunt Sarah, I can bring this mic over there. You don't want to say anything. Camera shy, okay. Well, that's fine. Uh, now, do you want to say anything, Uncle Manny? Come on, <laughs> come on, no stories about the two of you when you were kids and you got into trouble or anything like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, all of the men Klaskis are really known to be very Kalton and Shumas. And I can remember when we were, oh, I don't know, uh, many, many, many years ago. And the most outstanding thing I can say about my brother was that at any time in the morning, early morning or late at night, that you would pull a blanket back, he would always be in bed with a pair of socks on. And that's the most outstanding thing I can think of to say. Uh, anybody? Uncle Sam, you want to? Okay, okay. Helen's going to come up here? Okay. All right, we'll have Helen. <laughs> I know it was a surprise to see us here because we were with them the third and we went out to, to a show and we went to dinner and they had no idea what was going on. I mean, <laughs> it was just one of those things. I just want to say a little something. All the years we've known Red, I always thought of him as a little kid. Now I find out he's nine years younger than Sam and only five years younger than me. <laughs> the little kid, little kid got older pretty quick. <laughs> he also caught up almost caught up to us. How'd that happen? <laughs> Many happy returns of the day. Thank you very much. Okay, now does anybody have anything that they want to reveal about my dad? Yeah, we should get some good stories from these people. <laughs> No, long standing. He meant long standing. Yeah. <laughs> of course, Phil and I can talk about the red paint on the black car, or was it the black car and the red paint? But we won't get into that. Uh, if I can have that, the gift that I brought that's wrapped in the blue paper, it would, it would be apropos at this time since we're talking about cars. And, uh, yeah, the one with the silver bows. God, if I, was, uh, if I was Ben Gordon, I could tell you a very funny story now. Uh, where's Ben Gordon? Ben, funny story. Yeah. <laughs> you know, as many years as I've known, as many years I've known Maury, I've always had one thing in mind. I could never ask them. I says, "How come we like my hamburgers better than the other people's corned beef sandwiches?" And he never gave me the answer. <laughs> the price was right. <laughs> no, I just want to wish him a happy birthday and many more. That's what I'm trying to figure. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Yes, 
I used to bring him hamburgers every every Wednesday religiously when he was in the hospital. Three months. For three months. And his mother, God bless her soul, used to bring him corned beef sandwiches. He always ate my hamburger, but he never ate the corned beef sandwich. Was just trying, that's the only reason I'm asking that question. My doctor's here was on my diet <laughs> Uh, for many, many years, I made my living as a uh, cartoonist, caricaturist, and uh, for this occasion, I did a caricature of Maury. I'm not going to tear it open. I want him to tear it open, and then I want to just say a few quick things about what happened here. And uh, we'll turn around and show it to everybody. Klasky, happiness to him is a tight transmission and a royal flush. want to come up? <laughs> Any stories? God, you've lived an exemplary life, Dad. <laughs> oh. No, I have friends. They don't want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> this is all being recorded. You don't have to worry about any legal liability. I can't say because I wasn't there. That was the only one in five years I missed. But I wasn't there. The others I were. Now, if you want me to give you a detailed report of the others, and you've got a couple of hours, I know which one because everybody was jumping out the windows. I don't I don't know if anyone is here. No, I don't think what? The only the only bad the only bad thing that happened in my past was that unfortunately we were raided at a card game and arrested and we went to the Monterey Park Jail, and that's been 30 years ago, and I think the record's been expunged. <laughs> there, there is somebody in the background. I can't see him. Where, where is Paul? Oh, there's Paul. Oh no, that's okay. Paul, Paul Green remembers that incident. Right, Paul? <laughs> it's expunged. Nothing on our records. I checked it. Okay. Um, Alan, Eric, did either one of you guys want to say something? All right. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, 
This man has been such an exemplary example for me. I have nothing bad to say about him. It's terrible. I always saw him doing the right things. But 30 years ago, uh, a, a frightened young man, myself, from New York City, arrived here in California. <laughs> That's my brother-in-law. <laughs> and <clears throat> my cousin Molly and her husband, Maury, opened their house to me and uh, I knew I had a haven here in Southern California. As well as my sister's house, I know I had the Klasky house. And every year, they would invite me for Thanksgiving dinner. I, I'm not sure what it was. I, I think they, they were afraid I was going to starve between Thanksgiving dinners. And every year I would just come out of there just stuffed and I, I thought I was going to grow some feathers. It was just, just wonderful. But I, I knew I had a, I had a, a haven and I, I really appreciate that. And Ma Maury, I've got to tell you now, Diane's idea, and my idea also, was to buy that crown for you. And I haven't had a cha chance to check this out with Molly. But whenever you put that crown on, you are king in your house. Okay? You, you are. Okay. <laughs> right. And I do believe that Molly is committed to do anything at your beckoning. But knowing my cousin, there is a time limit on it. And I think she, what she would say is, the next time it snows in Monterey Park, <laughs> it'll work. <laughs> Happy birthday, Maury. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. Oh, okay. Well, okay. I'll say uh-huh. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I'm the sister. I'm also a cousin of Molly. And she very generously, and did Maury, opened their house to us when we came from New York, tired, exhausted, with a two-and-a-half-year-old who is now 37. Oh. 37, dear? This is a lesson in ancient history. Yeah, too. right. <laughs> but I knew Maury a little bit before that. One of the first times I met him, other than the letters we used to write when uh, you were down at Elgin Field, was he was in a hospital bed. And I think it was New England Deaconess, up on Baptist. that hill? Baptist. Was it Baptist? It snowed. The snow was, I would say, about up knee high. And I trudged up the hill so I could take care of my cousin husband and I think I did for two hours and then he said go home <laughs> I don't know what I did but anyway I think that was one of the first times we met when you were in New England uh, Baptist on that snowy night yes it was thank you so much for opening your house and just for being you Lori I got, I, got, I got one complaint we've been friends for 30 years why why? What are you doing? <laughs> There's only one problem. You seduced my wife into big cars. You bought me a Chrysler New Yorker station wagon. And since that time, I haven't been able to get the old lady out of a big, heavy car that looks like a Sherman tank. But other than that, kid, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, Alan, do you have anything you want to say? Uh, I'm also a Randall from the other side of the fence, if you will. Alan Randall, my cousin. <laughs> and I would like to wish you a very happy birthday and many more. When I come out here again to be work for another 10 or 15 years from now, I expect to come over the house, <laughs> have a place to sleep, which I have had for about oh, a couple of weeks before I found my own place. But um, really, my experiences go back well, when I was in the service. A few years ago, about five or six, I think it was. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I that back then I was. Um, I think when I came to Detroit, I was about 18 or 19. Uh, and um, I used to come from Norfolk to Detroit in a weekend. I don't know how the hell I did. I used to hitchhike too, and I don't know why. I loved Detroit; it was great. But I used to get hospitality there, and um, let's see, we really didn't see each other for a number of years until I came out here. I, I'm originally from Boston and I have an accent which you pr people probably think I have an accent. I really don't have an accent. You have an accent. I now live in Denver and the company I work for is based in Denver and I'm doing a job out here. That's why I'm out here now. I'm sort of transient right now. But I came out here and I lived a couple of weeks with uh, the Klaskies and I appreciate it very much. Great meals. 
And now that uh, Monty's back on her feet again, you don't have to do any more dishes, right? <laughs> but again, I'd just like to thank you very much and uh, many more. And we'll be in Denver pretty soon, right? I don't remember that many great meals. Do you guys remember that many great meals? What, how come? How come? How come all these people? Okay. Uh, Mike, did you want to say anything? You're gonna okay? No, no. Marsha, you gonna you wanna you wanna get any? Uh, all right. And anybody else? You know, this is a free for all. We have food. Um, <laughs> Mike. Mike Goodman. This is my cousin. Hello, everyone. Uncle Red, very happy birthday. Seventy years young, huh? Young. That's yeah, great. Well, this this little story has to do with impression, and uh, back as being a very impressionable 17-year-old, and I'm sorry, but Uncle Manny, I have to throw you into the story. And uh, one particular summer, the summer of '56, they asked me to come down to the store and just help out around the wrecking yard. Uh, by the time the summer was over, they wished to God I never even came down. And uh, because they called me Red Lead Mike by the time I was done. But uh, I've always looked up to my Uncle Red with the highest esteem and the same with my Uncle Manny. And uh, never heard a cross word for them, from them or a foul word or anything. And one particular day, I come out from the yard, and they each individually get on the telephone, and uh, they're talking to a customer, and uh, first thing I heard was hello, and then I heard bleep, 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 bleep. And I said, yeah, they know those words too. <laughs> you know, and gee, I felt so much more comfortable by this time after, after uh, hearing all this. And like I said, by the time the summer got over, they were glad that I was gone because it just so happened that uh, little careless Mike got in an accident, <laughs> and that yeah, I got it. and that took care of that. So anyway, that was as far as impressions go. But uh, as to uh, looking up to someone, I couldn't look up to anyone anymore. Anyone want to volunteer? If you don't, I'm going to be calling on you. <laughs> okay. No. See, I really don't have a story to tell because, like you say, he was so good. You know, it must have been because we quiet. But I couldn't let this opportunity to go by without wishing you a wonderful 70th birthday. And uh, so glad to have known you both. As far as uh, most of the people here are concerned, we are fairly new friends to the Klaskis. Uh, most of you I, I, I know have been friends for many, many, many years. And I think we only go back a, a short while, about eight, ten years, or maybe not even that. Uh, but uh, we've become... Uh, very, very fond of, uh, of uh, Maury and Monty. And, uh, you know, the times that you thought that uh, Maury and, uh, and I were going somewhere when you and Bobby were at, uh, at the class, well, I mean, we won't talk about where we were, were we, were we Maury? <laughs> we can't. Uh, we couldn't either. Uh, but it, it's been uh, a real pleasure uh, knowing Maury and Monty. And, uh, I don't know of anybody that uh, deserves the uh, accolades that have been uh, told today about Maury, and I only hope that we can enjoy your friendship for a good many years to come. Whoever, whoever gave Maury this hat, I want to tell you a little story about it, and it says, once a king always a king. Once a knight and you're a sissy. <laughs> 
And that was impromptu. <laughs> okay. Anybody else want to say anything? Yeah, okay. You got it. Well, uh, anybody? Going once, going twice. This is. I have a story I want to tell. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, we have some letters here. This is a letter from Paul. The letter did come from my cousin Paul, Lillian, and Danny's son, who's in Israel. Want me to read these? Mazel Tov and many more. Love, Paul, Miriam, Gabi, and Yuval, the Hamburgs. So, happy birthday. And then I understand you have a letter from one of our more esteemed uh, individuals. One of our friends, Ron. Now this is legitimate. This is a letter from Ronald Reagan. Isn't that nice? And we're trying to find out why. <laughs> and that's why we've really cut you here today. Haven't you heard? What? Everybody's been talking, that's why. He sold him a transmission. Okay, but it says, Dear Mr. Klasky, you're going to get a, okay. As the happy birthdays ring out, Nancy and I are delighted to join the chorus of admiration. We want to be sure to include our good wishes and all those most deservedly coming to you during this special birthday celebration. <laughs> May God bless you and keep you for many more. Sincerely, Ronald Reagan. Republican this year. <laughs> um, but Nancy, I think, knows about this. Is you don't really? No, we want to know about it. Okay. So has nothing to do with your income tax forms. Don't worry about it. Okay. Well, you want to? Anybody else want to say anything? We have. Uh, are you all hungry and just cold and just? <laughs> okay. Huh? As I said before, I want to thank everybody and thank them very much. And may we all be together on happy occasions and healthy occasions. Thank you. Now, now drink, but don't drive, just drink. Okay, let me get this out of the way. Hey, you guys.
healthy birthday. Love always. Al and Marcia Silver. Necker Silver. <laughs> I'm getting into an exclusive group.
Mom? Are you taking these chairs with you? These are your chairs.
Okay, so we're going to get a plastic tonight.